We're going to get into our Bears mock draft coming up in a second. I'm Harrison Graham. It is Bears Now by Chat Sports. Today we are sponsored by 8sleep. Get $200 off the pod cover at 8sleep.com slash chat sports. Sleep better than ever. We'll tell you how that's going to happen here in just a little bit. All right, mock draft 23.0. I challenge anyone watching who has done more than 23 Bears mock drafts up to this point. Uh, sure, maybe you've run the simulations on your phone. I've run dozens more of those. But uh, we've been cranking them out almost every single week. And uh, today's is kind of based on what the latest rumor mill has suggested. So I'm kind of trying to – I'm trying to base it on what I think could happen here. Like, not necessarily just, this is what I would do, and I don't care uh, what uh, – the reporting and the rumors suggest. Obviously, the Bears, as of now, just have these four picks. Number one, obviously, you could pretty much just fill it in. Caleb Williams, we'll get to that in a sec. Number nine, no second, 75 in the third round, 122 in the fourth, and then no fifth, sixth, or seventh. Those latest rumors, by the way, have suggested that maybe the Bears could be leaning offensive line over wide receiver. Brad Biggs went O-line in his latest mock. So did Peter Schrager, who strictly does it based on what he's hearing, whether he's hearing 100% accurate information this close to the draft or not, who knows, but uh, I think that is noteworthy. So let's get the obvious one out of the way. He got the crisp edit again. We'll see what jersey number he wears. Caleb Williams, round one, pick number one overall. Uh, the quarterback out of USC, I've told you for weeks, it's a formality. I think this thing's been done really since about the combine. Uh, and it is going to be official very, very soon. We know what he brings to the table. We know how talented he uh, is. We know how productive he was in college. We know his story, yada, yada, yada. Uh, you know, we'll continue to rehash it. Um, I think he's a special talent. I think he's one of the best QB prospects over the last decade or so. And we're just days away from it being official. And, look, it's up to him and his teammates and uh, this coaching staff to uh, – get the best out of him and for him to get the best out of himself. And if he hits, the Bears have a chance to be a really, really good team for a long time because Ryan Poles has done a nice job of retooling, rebuilding this roster to put a rookie quarterback in to be successful. So I'm very excited. And uh, once the pick becomes official, it, uh, it's going to be a lot of fun. And we'll be live breaking it all down. All right, before the Bears get to the number nine pick, this is how one through eight played out in this mock draft simulation. Drake May went to Washington number two, and Daniel Jeremiah thinks still thinks Washington's going to go May over Daniels, even though it's been a lot of Daniels buzz. Daniels went three uh, to New England. Cardinals took Marvin Harrison Jr. four. Chargers went Malik Neighbors at five. That would surprise me a little bit, but uh, that's how it fell here. J.J. McCarthy went six to the Giants. Joe Alt seven to the Titans, and then the Falcons took Dallas Turner, the Alabama edge rusher, at number eight. Overall, before the pick trace, we got to get to a trade alert in a second. But I want to know from you guys, what should the Bears do at number nine? Should they go wide receiver? Should they go offensive line? Or should they go with a trade? Let me know in the comments what the Bears should do with that number nine overall pick. Now, again, what I would do based on how the board played out, if you noticed, Roma Dunze was still available. I would almost certainly just take him. Now, would I listen to trade offers? Of course. But that is probably what I would do unless I was blown away. However, based on recent r rumors, reports, kind of just the momentum shift it feels like, at least on the rumor mill, I'm trading back because it sounds like the Bears might be seriously considering offensive line, and there's still a lot of them available with only Joel off the board. So the Colts come calling. Peter Schrager mocked the Colts moving up, and he's reported that they want one of the top receivers, and with the Dunes, they still available. The only difference is I took their second-round pick this year, not a second-round pick next year. The Bears already have two second-round picks next year. They don't have one this year. I want one right now if I'm Ryan Poles. So if the Colts want to come up to nine, they got to give me 15 and 46 to do it. So that is the trade. They get their guy in a Dunze. And we take offensive tackle Olu Fashanu out of Penn State. It is Fashanu because, uh, you know, we've been saying Fashanu a lot. But uh, that has been uh, confirmed in terms of the pronunciation. I remember early on when we were doing mocks, we were doing Olu a lot to the Bears. And he's a very good prospect. I just think some of these other offensive tackles had incredible years. So, they elevated a little bit, but I like him a lot. Did not give up a sack last year. Uh, 
10 hurries is not that much over the course of a college season. Four penalties isn't too bad either. You're talking about like one every three games. Uh, and guess what? Something we've talked about as well. Olu and Caleb were high school teammates. Look how big Foshinu is, by the way, there next to a high school running back. Holy shit. You got Caleb Williams running a little zone read action there. Uh, at Gonzaga College Prep there in Washington, D.C. Uh, they know each other well. We got to go to the NFL Combine, and uh, I spent time at Olu's podium, and he was asked straight up what it would mean to him to get the block for Caleb Williams once again. That'd be a great opportunity to block for Caleb. Again, you know, uh, we went to the same high school, so it'd be it'd be pretty funny if we were, you know, both reunited on an NFL team. You got any high school stories that you can share with us with Caleb? Any high school stories, you know, I mean, I really, I mean, nothing crazy, you know, Caleb, Caleb's super chill guy, you know, love him, you know, he's awesome. Very relaxed guy is Olu Fashionu. Uh, what I like about him here is, Look, we've talked about this. There might be a couple of tackles like a J.C. Latham, who was still available, by the way, when I made this pick, who have higher ceilings. But I haven't seen him play left tackle in college. A lot of scouts think he can in the NFL. I know Olu can. Even if his ceiling isn't quite as high as a Latham's, this guy has started two years at left tackle at a high level in the Big Ten. You look at his RAS score. Shout out to at MathBomb on Twitter. Go check him out. A lot of green there. He's athletic. Uh, he's nimble. He's powerful. He's got good arm length. Really the biggest negative in his measurables is he's got small hands, eight and a half inch hands, which by the way, he has got to have the worst like hand size to actual body size and mass ratio of all time. Like how many six, six, 300 plus pound guys out there have eight and a half inch hands? Like, I don't know how we got unlucky in that regard, but I think it's a minor concern. I don't think it's a massive one. Would you like him to have 10-inch hands? Sure. I mean, Latham's got 11-inch hands. Like, that packs a big punch. But when you watch him on tape, it doesn't seem to pop up that much, like, in terms of causing an issue. Like, if the technique is good, the hand size isn't going to matter too much. Uh, so I think it's a slight and minor concern. All the other measurables are there. The athleticism is there. The tape is there. So... You know, I think he'd even be a fine option at nine. I love it in a trade down, though. I think he's in that 12 to 16 range. I think that's proper for him. So you get him at 15, I think that'd be really good. The Saints at 14 have been linked to him a bunch. So it uh, could be risky if you move down to 15. But again, if Fashion who goes, then maybe J.C. Latham's still there. The point is, moving down from nine, there's going to be some options. Faltano could be there as well. I want to hear from you. What would you rather have? Would you rather have a Dunze at nine type RO or fashion new at 15 type OF, and factor in this also, you would also be picking a second round pickup. So like Fashanu at 15 plus a second, or just a Dunze at nine. I could see both arguments. I'd still probably lean a Dunze, but I wouldn't be like crazy upset if this happened either. Go ahead and let me know what you guys think. Today's show is sponsored by 8Sleep, the high-tech solution to your age-old sleeping issues. 8Sleep's Pod 3 cover slips right over your mattress, bringing heating and cooling technology that keeps you comfortable and sleeping deeper for a better and more restful night. I've had my Pod 3 cover for several months now since the start of the new year, and uh, I've never slept better. Sleep Science shows that in order to sleep our best, our body temperature needs to drop in the early and middle part of sleep and rise in the morning. The pod cover will improve your sleep by automatically adjusting your bed's temperature based on your individual needs. The cover can be added to any bed like a fitted sheet. And here's what's cool. If you sleep with a partner, your side of the bed can be uh, heated or cooled anywhere from up to 110 degrees down to 55. Same on their half of the bed. So maybe you have a partner who likes a warmer bed or a cooler bed. You can adjust that on either side, which is awesome. And what's cool about the pod cover as well is not only is that temperature going to be perfect all night long, it tracks your sleep and health metrics via the app that you will be able to connect to once you get this product. And customers, on average, see their sleep improve by 32% after just one month on the pod. Think about that, getting 32% better sleep one month from now. That could happen to you. Go to 8sleep.com slash chat sports, 8sleep.com slash chat sports. That gets you $200 off. Don't wait. Take advantage. Link is in the comments and in the description. All right, we're trading again. We're having fun here on this mock draft. Um, you know, there were a few receivers I liked at 46, like three or four, and I was like, okay, Dolphins want to trade up. They're at 55. I think one of these guys will still be there when I move down. Pick up a third next year because Miami doesn't have a third or even a fourth after their second this year. So third next year to move down nine spots in the second round, I think that's pretty decent. 
overall. And I pick up a guy we haven't talked about a ton, but I wish we would have spent more time on him because I think he's going to go top 50, top 75. Ricky Pearsall, the wide receiver out of Florida. This guy has special athleticism, man. Really, really good. And uh, Florida's offense hasn't exactly been a juggernaut the past two years, but he's been really productive. Last year had a great year. 65 grabs for almost 1,000 yards. Four touchdowns had only two drops the entire season. He's a good contested catch guy despite being under 200 pounds. He is 6'1", so decent size there. But look at the athletic testing. I mean, 4-4-1, the 20 and 10-yard splits were excellent. 42-inch vertical, almost an 11-foot broad jump, which is just absolutely outrageous. You see uh, three of those four boxes there, elite, elite, elite. This guy is an absolute freak. And the only box that is an elite is a height and weight and bench press box. So in terms of like athleticism, explosion, and speed, he's a freak. I mean, he's an absolute freak. And what I like about him too, and the other guy I was considering in this range was Keon Coleman, who's bigger, but Pearsall, I think is a, first of all, he's faster. I think he's a little smoother too. Like Keon Coleman tries to kind of just bully with his size, which that works. And I thought about taking him and I like Keon Coleman, but Pearsall is crisper. He, I think, separates more easily. And he's just a burner. I mean, he can really, really go. So you put him on this depth chart. He's your number three receiver. Tyler Scott can kind of slide back to being your four, just be kind of a gadget guy slash home run hitter. DJ Moore and Keenan Allen as your two vets with Pearsall as your three. Wouldn't mind that at all. So sure, you don't get the Roma Dunze there, but you get uh, Olu Fashionu, Ricky Pearsall, and a third-round pick next year instead of just uh, – Roma Dunze at nine. So, hey, when you put it in that context, you certainly can understand why trading down is pretty appealing at the end of the day. Now, we're going to be live for the NFL Draft all three days starting on Thursday. Not sure what time yet on Thursday. It starts at 7 Central. We'll go live at least at 6, but probably like 5 with the Bears having the number one pick. So, turn on the notifications so you don't miss out. Me and Rolly are going to have you covered all night long. It's going to be a party. Two picks inside the top ten. It should be a whole lot of fun. So, Join the family here at Bears Now and subscribe today. All right, a guy we talked about on our day two draft tar or, uh, draft targets for the Bears, Braylon tries the edge out of Washington. Go check out that video, by the way. Number 75 overall. I don't really get why he seemingly has slipped. I, I remember, like, earlier in the draft process, like, or, you know, leading up to the comma, I was like, this guy's going to go like, early second round. And now it's like, eh, he could go, like, third, mid-late third. I'm like, okay. I mean, I think 75 is great value because – I think he's a day one solid pass rusher. I mean, he has 16 sacks over the past two years. Uh, his pass rush win rate last year was right around 18%, which is a really good number. PFF graded him out highly, both overall and as a pass rusher. Adequate enough as a run defender. I think that's where he's going to fall a little bit. He's not going to be a guy that, you know, is just elite stopping the run right away. And he may never be that. But if he's adequate, I think he's a starter in this league. I think his rookie role for a team is like a – Come in on third downs, pin your ears back, and, and and rush the quarterback, and that can that can work for the Bears this year. Like obviously, you'd like to have that long term three down edge opposite of Montez Sweat, but we also know that Matt Eberflus likes to rotate a lot, and Demarcus Walker, a good run stopper, a decent pass rusher, maybe he's still your starter in this scenario. And then in pass downs, Walker can either kick inside or you bring in Trice as a in sub packages to rush the passer you just need more guys who can get to the quarterback and Trice can do that so you can get him in the third round I think that value is really really good and it fills a need that is still pretty glaring oh baby let's have fun here fourth round pick 122 Theo Johnson the tight end out of Penn State I told you guys Ricky Pearsall is an athletic freak this guy might be in a category of his own I mean, it is insane. This guy's measurables and athleticism. He is 6'6", 259. He, his vertical was almost 40 inches at the size, broad over 10 feet at that size, 4'5", 40, despite being 6'6", 260. Um, this guy athletically is unbelievable. He's got huge hands at over 10-inch hands, arm length at 33. I mean, his hand size and arm length is like a left tackle. It's incredible. And then he got a little bit better as a player, too. He's still a little bit raw, but I love the red zone usage for him this year. Seven touchdowns. And keep in mind, too, 
Penn State's quarterback play has been abysmal in recent years. Still had 34 grabs, which was 14 more than the year before. Uh, about 10 yards per catch there, 341 total. Only two drops, so still pretty good there. And the beauty of getting a guy like this in the fourth round who's still a little bit raw and could use some development, you've got your one-two punch. Cole Komet and Gerald Everett are in place. This guy can just be your number three, plays a handful of snaps a game, you know, I think he's a good enough run blocker that, it, you know, if you go 13 personnel, you can bring him in in those situations. Red zone, you could get him some looks because he is such a big body. But this could be mostly a developmental year. Like, hey, we're going to play you 10 snaps a game, 10 to 15, and you're going to learn. You're going to sit behind Cole Komet and learn. You're going to learn from Gerald Everett, one of the best pass-catching tight ends in this league. And uh, by 2025, you're going to have a much bigger role. You get a guy like that with those traits and that athleticism in the fourth round, Whew, sign me up. I mean, I, I there's a chance he goes on day two because he is so damn athletic, but I would love the value here in the fourth. So there you go. Bears mock draft 23.0 is in the books. We get Caleb Williams, of course. Trade down for Olu Fashionu, the offensive tackle out of Penn State. Um, trade down again for Ricky Pearsall, uh, the wide receiver out of Florida. You get Braylon Trice in the third, the edge washer out of Washington. Uh, edge washer, edge rusher out of Washington, and then Penn State tight end Theo Johnson there in the fourth. And remember, also have that future third-round pick coming in. So we turned four picks into five players plus a future third. Pretty good here and still fill pretty a lot of needs here as well. So uh, I like the way this one played out. Great today's Bears mock, A, B, C, D, or F. Let us know how you guys think we did and drop a letter grade down in the comments section.